Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Ari Views back with another video and today we're talking about the battery life on the new iOS 18.5. Now during my experience with this update from beta 1 up to the public release, the battery life has actually been quite solid. Even having here an iPhone running iOS 18.5 with the battery health at around 90%, it's still actually quite good. But if you have any concerns regarding the battery life of your iPhone or you just want to get better battery life on your iPhone running the new iOS 18.5, I will show you guys a few tips and tricks that will actually help you get better battery life on your iPhone. Now, first of all, what you have to do is actually just wait. According to Apple, this has been confirmed. Once a new update is installed on the iPhone, it will require a few days, like four to five days, for the update to basically settle in on the device. That means that there will be tasks running in the background on those days, which means that the battery life will be a bit worse. So wait for a few days and your battery life should actually improve. The next thing you wanna do is make sure you have updated to the latest version. Now this is for people that had a beta of iOS 18.5 on their device. Make sure that you have installed the latest versions. Like you can see right here, I updated to the RC version, but then Apple released another RC version, which is basically this one is the final. So don't leave it like this. Make sure you have updated to the latest release of iOS 18.5. Another thing you want to make sure is that you have also updated your apps. And as you can see right here, once a big release for iOS is out, there will be a ton of updates from the apps. Most popular apps usually release updates after an iOS update. So you want to make sure that you have all of your apps up to date with the latest features, of course, but also with the latest improvements that make these apps more compatible with the latest iOS release. Now, what you can also do, and this is, of course, the easy way and how I think you should do it, head on to your settings and then go under apps here. You will find here app store and just under automatic downloads, you will have app updates. Make sure you have this enabled. And then once a new release is out for any of your apps, it will be actually installed automatically automatically on your device. The next thing is the new wallpaper that Apple has added to iOS 18.5. Now, I really love this wallpaper. It actually looks really cool, especially on the mode when it goes to the standby mode, it looks awesome. But as you can see here, every time I unlock and I unlock my device, it will have these like really cool animations. But as you probably know, these animations will actually consume battery. So if you just want to have the best battery, make sure you just use a still wallpaper. Next up, we're moving under the settings here and head on to your settings, go under Apple Intelligence and Siri, of course, if you have a device that does support Apple Intelligence. Now, if you have Apple Intelligence enabled on your device, but you're actually not using it, most people probably won't actually use these. So make sure you go ahead and just switch it off completely. Now, I know I have Apple Intelligence here turned on on my device, and I can't even remember the last time I actually used any of its features. So if you're not just using it, make sure you have it switched off. Next up, we're moving under the accessibility settings and we have a few settings here that I think you should disable for the best battery life on your iPhone that are actually really, really important. Now, first of all, we have vocal shortcuts. Now, this is a pretty cool feature and it will probably be useful for a lot of people, but it does consume a ton of battery. Here's the reason. So if I have this enabled, it will actually stay using the microphone all the time. As you can see right there, it just turned on the microphone indicator. And even when you're not using the feature, the microphone will stay active. It's listening for the commands for the shortcuts to come basically the, for you to say the shortcuts. And it's always, as you can see right there, it's always working in the background. You don't want that to happen. That will consume a ton of battery. So if you don't actually need this feature, make sure you have it turned off. The same goes for music haptics. If you don't actually use music haptics, you don't actually need them. Make sure you have them switched off. As you probably know, anything that has to do with the haptic engine on your iPhone that will give you a vibration as a feedback will also consume a ton of battery. So if you don't actually need this, make sure you have it switched off. 
and sound recognition as well. Sound recognition will also consume a ton of battery. Now, basically what this feature is doing is that it will just stay active all the time trying to listen for the sound. So if you have it enabled and you have a few sounds set here, it will actually just all the time stay active, listening for those sounds to notify you that will of course consume battery. Anything that needs to be running in the background that has a process running in the background does consume a ton of battery, but it also CPU power, which might actually even worsen the performance of your iPhone, especially if you have an older device. Next up are widgets. Just be careful with the widgets that you use on the home screen of your device, especially any widgets that need to be updated all the time, like the news or the weather widgets that need to be updated or even use your location all the time. Those will actually consume a ton of battery. So if you have widgets that are like still widgets like this one, or maybe this one right here, that's not a problem. But if you're using something like, you can see right here, the stocks widget, they will consume a ton of battery. So make sure to be very, very careful and choose wisely which widgets you're actually using on your home screen. Another thing that you need to be really aware of is apps that are actually draining your battery. Now you can find that out simply by going to your settings, head on to the battery section here and switch to the 10 days and then just take a look at the list of the apps that you have right here. Now if you see here at the top apps that you actually use a lot, that means that it's okay. Those are being used a lot. They will consume a ton of battery. But if you see here apps that you don't actually use a lot, but they're still consuming a ton of battery, it's time for you to delete those apps and just replace them with another alternative from the app store. The next thing you want to do is head on to your settings, go to general, go to airdrop and turn it off. I use this maybe a few times a day, maybe some days I won't use it at all. So I actually just want to have it off because it's not necessary to be on because it does consume battery and also the bringing devices together. Just make sure you have that switched off completely. A pretty cool feature. It looks nice. You probably haven't used it anytime. Maybe you have used it once or twice just to try it out, but it's a feature that will also consume a ton of battery. Next up is 5G. Now this will be based on your location. If you're somewhere that you have good 5G coverage, it's okay to use it, even though it will of course consume a ton of, a ton of battery, but you can use it. But if you're on a place where you don't really have really good 5G coverage and you're always switching between 5G and 4G or LTE, that will just drain the battery out of your iPhone. Your iPhone will always try to connect to 5G, that way consuming a ton of energy. Next up is location services. Now you can see right here, once I go to privacy and security, when I go to location services, I have this completely switched off because when I don't actually need it, I don't enable it at all. The only time I might use this is on a navigation app and that's about it. Other times I don't really need to have location services turned on, so I just switch them off. But if you need them, then just go ahead and take a look at this list of apps right here. Make sure that you disable as many apps as you can. And for most apps, you should basically use while using the app and just turn off precise location. Precise location is needed for things like maybe maps or any running apps that you have where you have basically a nav navigation. Otherwise, other apps don't need to have your precise location. Now the same goes here for system services. There are a few things you can turn off. For example, right here, iPhone analytics, improve location, improve maps, just turn those off. You won't also need, uh, need alerts and shortcuts automations, Apple Pay, merchant identification, device management, setting a time zone, suggestions and search all of these are things you can turn off and also significant locations you can just completely turn them off and save a ton of battery so that's basically it for this video guys hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it helpful if you did smash that like button and subscribe for more and i'll see you on the next one